right now. All right, so let's get started. So Impact at CIS is a student group and it was started in 2016 by Abir Desai, who is here with us today, um, and he's waving his hand. Um, and it started out um, as a small group, you know, really just trying to um, figure out and, and understand and experiment with ways in which we can bridge the integral paradigm with, with the outside world. You know, one thing that I remember Abir telling me is that um, you know, CIS, the campus is like right in the middle of like all these tech companies, like right next to Twitter, but yet spiritually, we're so far away from them. And so what, what can the integral paradigm do to, to sort of facilitate um, that vision to unfold into all areas of life? So this is the mission as of now, um, to offer CIS students with support on impact oriented projects while creating a space that nurtures integral leadership and creativity in order to build and sustain a community that thrives on transdisciplinary change making. And this is our vision. This is, this is pretty new. We just created this um, and it's what we're doing right now. But our goal really is to create a very sustained, uh, um, sustainable incubator um, that can enable all our participants to somehow get access to uh, you know, support and funding with all the projects that they are um, uh, engaged in. So it's to build a student-led incubator that provides sustained support and funding to students who are utilizing an entrepreneurial toolkit to facilitate and nurture the integral paradigm shift. This is our leadership team. We have a couple of uh, our members here with us today. And I don't know if you guys just want to maybe wave your hand or just say hello. <laughs> um, Rose, uh, our partnerships manager, Sarah, our curriculum designer, uh, me, my, the program director, Aie, our organizational manager, Lucien is our workshop host tonight, and he's also a coach. Echo is also a coach. Jamie, coach. Lucia, Lucia coach. Alexander is our coach. Heather is our coach. Jamie is our coach. Thank you. So we're very, very excited. The team has been growing and uh, we hope to you know, keep have it, having it grow. So these are the three concepts that um, impact at CIS is really trying to nurture. The first one is this idea of the Medici effect and it comes from the uh, um, Franz Johansson. He's a thought leader. And basically what he's saying is that diversity is what drives innovation. Um, how can you put, um, you know, how can you think about a supernova and the homelessness crisis? Why, you know, how do you bring those two polar opposite ideas together and create something out of it? Breakthrough ideas are most, most often occur when we bring concepts from one field into a new unfamiliar territory. And I believe that's that's what we're really doing at, at, at CIS. You know, we're, we're, we're transdisciplinary individuals. And uh, as one of my professors uh, uh, likes to call it idea sex, how can we enable that to keep unfolding in, in our work? Um, one of the best examples I have is, is of biomimicry. You know, when they tried to um, uh, design the Shinkansen, the bullet train in, in Japan, they looked at a kingfisher bird to, to, to uh, look at how the beak is shaped in order to design the bullet train. The second is this idea of the liquid network. And this also comes from a thought leader, Stephen Johnson. He wrote the book, Where Good Ideas Come From. And, and he's basically saying that in order to be more innovative, uh, we must put ourselves in environments that share the same network signatures as the brain, enabling a fluidity of thought. Um, and so that's what we really wanna create with this incubator, a place for fluidity and, and, um, and network signatures to emerge, uh, almost like the carbon atom um, and its innate ability to form new complex molecules with other atoms. And this last one, the integral impact uh, concept, that is something that we are bringing to the table, uh, all of us together. Um, we don't know what it is yet. And um, we're still, I think it's continuously going to evolve as we all bring our creativity and, and, and participate with this uh, idea. So 
when we when we think about integral, um, we can begin to see it as an integral paradigm shift. You know, uh, this idea of the paradigm shift comes uh, from Thomas Kuhn, uh, and who wrote the structures of scientific revolution. And and basically, a paradigm is a constellation of beliefs, values, and techniques shared by a community at a particular period. It governs the thinking and research activities of scientists until some of its basic assumptions are seriously challenged by new observations. So, you know, one of the best examples of a paradigm shift, shift is um, from the geocentric model to the, to the heliocentric model. It completely shifted humanity's worldview, uh, you know, about our place on this planet in this world. And so we could say that we are uh, you know, the accepted science currently is material reductionism and the revolutionary science is the integral. And we're in, we're, we're, we're emerging into that. What would it mean for the entire world to be within that paradigm? And, you know, Aurobindo, for instance, who, uh, who, who, um, uh, whose idea of integral is, is really where our, our school, California Institute of Integral Studies is, is rooted in uh, his uh, integral yoga. And so his is really a way of being, uh, it's, it's, it's a synthesis of all these yogas uh, rather than just having a fragmented approach uh, towards enabling our, our evolutionary uh, unfolding to, to, to move towards divinity. Um, and, you know, we could really look over here at um, peace, being, and, um, and knowledge as the integral, and power, action, and body as the impact. Uh, how can we really hold all of that together in what we're doing? And, and obviously, this whole model is integral to, to Aurobindo, but, but here we're wondering what it means to, to be integral impact within, within this yoga. But I think it's also important to, to think about, you know, not even to think, but to feel into what integral is. I mean, we have all these ideas and theories, you know, there's Ken Wilber out there with his integral theory as well. Um, and one of my favorite um, quotes is, is from Alfred Note Whitehead, uh, who's a philosopher uh, we study extensively in PCC. And he said that reality is not made up of ideas, but feelings. And so, I put all these different images here because it's it's radically plural uh, in in a very Aurobindo uh, Aurobindian way. Um, you know, integral cannot be contained, and so it's each of us that brings our own perspective, our own feeling into this that makes it integral. Um, you know, Jorge Ferrer says that human spirituality emerges from people's co-creative participation in the mystery of life. So it really requires our creativity and our participation to, to, to feel into what the integral is. So these are the stages um, of the incubator. Uh, we're all starting out in February with uh, uh, in the idea pool. And the idea pool is really, I mean, we can see in this image, all these ideas and concepts are, are kind of fragmented. You're, you're kind of swimming in a pool of complexity and, and unknowns, um, but you're, you're, you're enabling yourself to generate ideas and, and, and slowly begin to connect them. And then you move into the integral dive. And this is where you, you sort of deepen into your idea of, of what it means to, to be in the integral realm. How do you apply your integral education to your project? Um, and then we have the participatory launch, which is about bringing your, your idea, your project out into the world. Uh, you know, it's not just something that you do inside your room, but it's about enabling that that idea and yourself to participate with the larger world and to learn and, uh, and, and um, develop the tools that you need to sustain such a project. So this is going to be the schedule for uh, the spring. Um, and, and today we have the orientation and we have uh, Lucien's workshop. And then on the 17th, we will have a design thinking training. Uh, Anna Maria Manda from Zurich will be coming in to, to give a training on design thinking. And um, we're gonna send out a poll after this workshop to find out uh, which timing would work for all of you because she's gonna be uh, jumping in from Zurich. So the time difference is, is quite crazy. 
Um, so we will let you know about that um, pretty soon. And then we're and then she's going to come in again the week after to do an ideation workshop. How to generate ideas is is basically the um, the ground on which that will be. And then you'll dive into the integral um, with a delight based discipline. Uh, designing Habits for Wholeness, uh, uh, one of our coaches, Rose, will be uh, hosting this workshop. Uh, and then you can see all the other workshops are TBD because we don't know the dates yet, but as they emerge, we will, we will keep you posted. But just uh, have a rough sense that we'll be having three workshops events per month. Um, oops. And then um, in May, we would you know, we, we don't want to force anyone to, to, to present or pitch, but this is something we would love to do just to really show and, and, and enable the larger CIS community to participate in the work that you have been doing and in this massive meta project that we are all engaged in. Um, so please consider uh, presenting uh, your, your project or wherever you are in, that, in the stage, it doesn't matter, just to show your process is what we're looking for. So as you go along, I would like you to think about this idea of the philosopher. Um, you know, you can the, the philosopher plays a really important part in civilization and th throughout history that a ph philosopher has. But yet in, in modern society, maybe the philosopher is not considered uh, to be such a prominent role or figure. Uh, in fact, you know, when I tell people I'm doing a, a philosophy degree, they're like, what are you going to do with that? You know, that's the question that I always get. And I'm so tired of answering that question. So I think that's why I created this phrase, um, because I was like, I know I want to do something as well. I don't want to just, you know, think I don't want to be the thinker. I want to be the doer as well. And I think that a lot of us feel the same way. But yet, you know, you can do without thinking. And so what does it mean to hold both equally? Um, you know, this is Jacqueline Novogratz. Uh, she's the um, founder of Acumen. It's a global nonprofit that's changing the way um, the world tackles po poverty by, by investing in sustainable businesses, leaders, and ideas. And, and she's really doing such a wonderful job. And so, uh, you know, combining these two figures, uh, I, I leave it up to you, you know, to, to um, discover what that means. What does it mean to you to be a philosopher? And so as you embark on this integral impact journey, I want to, you know, we want to remind you that it is an experiment and it is a process. So, you know, these three things, I, I just keep it in mind that, that, you know, your first part and as a philosopher is to speculate and wonder, keep questioning throughout your process. Don't ever stop questioning. Uh, and, and in that way, you'll engage in epistemology and metaphysics and you'll, and you'll keep asking, what is the nature of an integral being and how do I come to know about it? And then the second thing is to honor the past and the diversity of the world, but to always remember to play and create and be creative. So holding the tension of tradition and innovation. And, and through this, you'll be able to engage in ethics and political philosophy by asking, what should I do? What actions can I take? What does an integral society look like? And lastly, uh, hold the tension of, of, of paradox by, by um, you know, creating harmonic contrasts in the project that, that you um, embark on. What, what is the aesthetic quality of what you are bringing into this, into this world? And, and ask yourself, what, what is beauty in an integral world? So with that, let's begin our journey of integral impact. I, um, I think we're at 420 actually, so we do have some time for questions before I hand it over to Lucien. So uh, if there are any questions, I'm ready to take. Oh, yes, Jody. Oh, you're muted. Could you just, um, could you repeat the questions that you just asked during that last slide, if that's not too silly? <laughs> Sorry, yes, absolutely. And I will be um, 
sharing these slides uh, with all of you in an email so you'll have it. But I basically asked, um, you know, how do you how do you come to know about um, the integral nature of, of reality or what what it, what is the nature of an integral being? And then um, what in terms of ethics and political philosophy, you ask yourself, what should I do? What actions can I take? And what does an integral society look like? And then lastly, um, in terms of aesthetics, uh, you, you can ask yourself, what is beauty in an integral world? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Yeah. Anyone else? All right, I guess we're good to go then, Lucien. You want to take over? Thank you so much, Samia. Um, yeah, I always feel so blessed to be <laughs> spoken to by you. <laughs> Samia is extremely inspiring, so we're really uh, fortunate to have her here. Um, Right, so this, thank you for coming. Uh, it's so nice to see so many of you. Um, my name is Lucien Dante Lazar and I am a transdisciplinary artist. Um, and I do a lot of different um, creative activities, basically. Um, one of those activities will happen tonight. And um, the, whole, the whole evening will be kind of meditation. So, um, we have a lot to do. It's going to be sort of like a rapid fire um, creative activity. Um, and it's really about um, quieting the soul so that your individuality can emerge and actually ask the right questions and make the right prayers and create the right images um, so that your business ideas and your integrative work can be um, selfless and actually in service to not only your own development, but to others. So um, without further ado, I'm just going to light a little candle for all of us. Um, and while I'm doing this, let's just take um, you know, 15 seconds to close your eyes and set the intention that the work we do tonight together um, will be in service to um, a free and truthful loving evolution. So does everyone have paper and pencils or crayons or pens or something? If you have color, that'd be best. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to give you little prompts and um, a time to do them. And while you're doing that, I might talk a little bit, um, but just kind of let yourself unfold through this diverse process. All right, so the first activity, we're going to spend five minutes and we're going to draw dark to light. So start from the outer edges and bring the darkness inward. And while you're doing this, you can begin. While you're doing this, feel the qualities that are creating that value relationship. So in the center, you should arrive at a sort of shape doesn't have to be any sort of shape, but creep into it from the periphery.
You can just be aware of the relationship of the movements of your hand and your intuition. Now you might be getting towards the interior at this point. Do you feel, is there something inward that is reaching outward that's sort of asking you where to identify it? In other words, there might be a consciousness emerging that um, is more active in what you're not doing than what you are doing. As you get more inward, you can start to tap into what does your heart feel in terms of this space that is becoming created? One more minute. Notice the overall movement and action of this drawing exercise. What's emerging sort of spiritually in relationship to how your body is moving. Okay, now we're going to take seven minutes and very slowly and intentionally draw something, well, draw this. So it, it's a little bit, um, not quite as intuitive as you think. You start just by doing a sort of lemon escape and then you go back and make the eye holes. And then when you get to the top, sorry, you start a new, a new row. So the, not, 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 uh, <laughs> no rows are touching. And as you do this, you can begin. Try to bring your consciousness in an immediate relationship with the drawing. So there's no like 
you are sort of anticipating where you're going to go, try to merge your mind with every single curve and its cross sections. And you can just go as long as the time we have. Do you mind restating the direction? Yeah, so you're going to start doing this sort of lemniscate pattern. And as you draw it, you want to merge your consciousness, merge your thought activity precisely with each movement of the drawing. You don't want to sort of think like, oh, I, I better make this, this a hole here and this a hole. You want to sort of feel the unfolding of that in your heart space. And just continuously go back and forth along the page. Now, one of the objectives of this is to mobilize your thinking by merging it with a physical movement. So it's completely one with an embodied activity. It's very subtle. You don't have to have an epiphany. You may eventually start to feel that you're not sure whether your mind is drawing or your hand. And that unsureness is an opportunity. If you feel the urge to speed up, try and resist that and harness the unity between your hand and your mind. What is the difference between this experience and the previous one? And note that to yourself. Are there certain places in your body that feel 
ignited or forgotten about. All right, now take two minutes and write a question. It may not be the first one that comes to mind. If you've already written your question, just spend time with it for the next minute. All right, now receive what has come from that question and metamorphose it into a prayer. We'll have five minutes to do this.
If you've already written your prayer, just appreciate it in the next two minutes. And one more minute. Okay. Now we're going to take some time on this one. I want you to draw a self portrait. But this portrait doesn't have to be what I see you as. It can be an image of your quality. It can be a a reflection of yourself. It can be another prayer but in the form of the drawing. You have 20 minutes. Spend time feeling yourself into the page so that when you finish this drawing, you feel that a living being is looking back at you. And let that living being come from noticing you. This would be a great time to use colors if you have any. Don't think too much about it. Don't, don't get stressed out about making it good or um, make sense somehow. <laughs> you could think of it like, what will I look at on this page that makes me feel seen? If there's a color or a form that you come to that seems to have a life of its own and is not sort of funneling into a preconceived goal of your artistic activity, notice that innate beingness of that color and form and follow it. Don't sort of suffocate it if there's something there that says, hey, follow me. Lucien, you can yeah. put the prompt into the chat window. Malala yeah. just asking. Thanks. So I won't be able to write all of this <laughs> in the prompt. 
<laughs> but I will write the very basic idea. While you're doing this, you might encounter moments where you feel a lack of trust. Like, I'm not sure if this is right, or I'm not sure if this is good. Overcome that barrier, basically. Sort of like being an alchemist and draw it away. <laughs> Notice how your hand, when connected to your heart consciousness, actually has wisdom in its, own, in its movement. It sort of takes some of the burden off of your contemplation. And you can almost follow the heart consciousness in your hand and be a sort of um, simultaneous guide rather than a dictator. There might also be moments with the colors and the forms that you're creating where you feel a level of comfort or discomfort with a certain quality you've made, like an edge or a gradient or a certain type of angle or curve. Love those areas and just play with them. Draw what makes your heart feel good, not only in how it looks, but in how your hand is moving. 
and recognize that as a self-portrait. Also notice, not separate from your activity, but while you're drawing, notice if there are certain karmas that you're revealing to yourself. Like what, what is the relationship between these colors in my feeling life? And as a reflection of myself, how can I apprehend that innate wisdom that I'm coming to through these very simple principles of color and form? Like why am I that sequence of forms? You can also notice, are there any places that don't feel like you that have come to your page? And how are you negotiating that happening? trying to think about why, but rather what you're doing in relationship to that area on the page.
Let's do four minutes. If you come to a stopping point for yourself, just some, spend some time receiving your drawing. Feel your own life when you look at the image and perceive the drawing with your own sense of life. Don't try to um, animate the drawing. Recognize that your living engagement through the creative process of making it is embedded in the colors and forms. And they innately hold that living element of yourself. All right, now with that idea or with that experience, uh, striving of experience of receiving the life in the drawing, give, write down a word of advice. Now this advice can come from the drawing to you you can feel it as sort of a directional movement emanating out of the out of the life of the drawing, or you can, from your person, give advice to your drawing. So you have three minutes.
Lucy and Susan is asking. Um, oh. Oh, so advice. Um, so like your portrait as a friend. It's like, hey, I think you should do this. Or maybe you wanna listen to that. Some just very simple, like what helpful guidance can you give to that portrait? Take one more minute. All right, now we're going to take 15 minutes for this. Write a poem in response to that advice. So write that down real quick. So a way you can think about this is many ways, but if you need help, um, bring that advice into a artistic experience of words. Allow the advice to unfold in a much more creative, mysterious way. The advice is a seed of truth. How can this poem become a tree of that seed? You don't need to think about rhyming or anything. Let really just let your heart sort of receive words onto the page. It would help if you hand wrote this, definitely not typing. There can be a sort of similar experience with the self-portrait drawing where the movements of your handwriting innately have um, health and illness in them. And because of that, you can sort of guide the quality of the words and how they actually are formed through handwriting. So if that can help you as a method if it doesn't, throw it away.
one tip with writing this, it may help to write very slowly. There's no need to rush your handwriting.
in three minutes. If you've already finished it, just read it. Um, very intimately. Let it be wise in your experience of it. Okay, now you're going to take 15 minutes to draw a reconstituted self-portrait. So this portrait is a metamorphosis of the first one. In light of the progress that has unfolded since So you can look at your first self-portrait and feel that there's something new behind it that can emerge now. That portrait is not ultimate. All right, in the chat something.
Okay, so you have five minutes. And so bring your drawing to a close. All right, now take two minutes and write three words. Fill each of these words with as much vitality and beneficence as you can.
All right. So for the remainder of our time, I would love to engage in a dialogue. Um, we can share what we've done. We don't have to. Um, you can ask questions to me or to other people in the, in, in the meeting. Um, the intention behind this last social part is um, not only to speak immediately after an experience like this um, in service to integral um, impact incubator and its mission, <laughs> Um, but also to bring what you've created, which is more of like a, a release in a way, um, and see how it can actually create a vital environment and dialogue. Um, and this doesn't have to be about anything specific. It could be about art. It could be about business. It could be about how you're feeling right now. Um, just the idea of actually speaking to one another um, and sharing. So thank you. Well, I just wanna say thank you so much. This is Rachel. Um, I got so much out of this. I surprised, I surprised myself, I think. Um, I think I definitely confirmed some things I have like been coming into like greater awareness of about myself in terms of like where I kind of feel my truth lies. And I'm definitely, it's definitely in my body. Even just noticing the difference in my reaction to like the initial prompt from like light to dark and starting from edges and corners and hearing those auditory, you know, hearing those in instructions, I had such a visceral <laughs> reaction to how I was, how I was reacting, like I was getting panicked, did I fall? I just was so conscious and in my mind. And then when we turned to the, the drawing and, and connecting my like my body with that my mind and body that was a such a such an incredible contrast I you know um it just confirms like everything that I wanted to even get out of CIS this idea that my truth lies in the, my body for me so that was just like this incredible affirmation like I just and um with all the things that have been going on in my day I'm so grateful that I was open and present enough to experience that. And um, I, I just said, I just think I got deeper and deeper into that truth. And um, like as with every exercise and, um, you know, things I've always, like I've kind of heard, you know, get into your body, quiet your mind. Like I've I have heard those things and I believe those things, but I feel like I really embodied that in this exercise. So it's really hard for me for someone who is like this compulsive strategist to really let go. And I just was so proud of what came out of that. I, I don't think I've ever drawn anything I've liked more ever, like ever in my whole life. So that means a lot for trusting my instincts with like what I what I want to do for the world, you know, and not overthinking it. And like, what does my belly feel like when I when I say this idea out loud, you know, I really want to start to trust all those bodily feelings. So thank you so, so, so much. <laughs> thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know everyone else can comment on that as well. But I just want to say you almost made me cry. <laughs> um, not because of anything I did, just just like feeling a human being in front of me um, is really like the goal of this, of hopefully CIS. Um, and actually it's the first thing you said was so meaningful because um, the initial title for this exercise was grounding the soul. 
And when you said like, I feel like I'm in my body now, um, it just kind of like reflected back to me um, why I do these things actually as my own practice. Like I do them on my own to like help with studying. I do them just as practical solutions for my own development. Um, and, and yeah, I just feel like you were also talking about, you were, you were sort of embodying the truth of it's not only important or we can't really like create something, we can't really offer um, something selflessly and beneficial, which is really just our wholeness, um, unless we actually like are present, unless we're here. And if we don't like take time to actually find ourselves in our work, then our work will be kind of like theoretical because it's not gonna be like, oh, that's, that's as beneficial for you as it is for me. And that's why I'm doing it. So that's kind of what I'm hearing from you. And I really appreciate hearing that for my own benefit. <laughs> Hey, Lucian, I'll... Going, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's all right. Do you want to say something else, Rachel? I don't mean to overstep. I just was thinking, you know, drawing is like an, scary and to me because I, I, I was, I always be like, I don't know how to draw. So I don't even, I don't even know how consciously open I was, but I, I, and then you would say something like, you may feel like you're doing something wrong or that, you know, whatever. And you're like, stick with it. And when I just relaxed again and just didn't judge it, and I was like, that squiggle isn't so bad. Like, let's love that. Let's, let's stick with that squiggle. Like, when I just was loving, it was like, wow, oh my gosh. Like, that wasn't supposed to be a necklace anyway. It was the color to a shirt. Like, who knew? But I just stuck with that squiggle. And instead of scrapping it, I just kept loving. I just loved it. And it turned into something else. Like, that was incredible so anyway i guess I do next, okay. that's all right yeah i, I want to second a lot of stuff that that rachel said uh, it, it's almost like um, uh, I got in touch with a little better stuff that's kind of been going around in my consciousness anyway that I was sort of afraid to to really bring out or deal with or something you know like kind of um, you know a big question in my mind is is uh, you, you know I'm here at this school in a way to like find out what I should do, you know, <laughs> like, you know, who, who I should be, I guess, you know, and, and that really, uh, and, and uh, there's a lot of fears around that too. And I felt like in the, in the first um, drawing that you had us do, I, I was especially in the dark parts, like, like really mashing it in mashing the pencil in into the into the papers really dark you know and then I almost like felt a release as I was going into the to the lighter parts um and then the way the self portraits changed into something of like almost like I was I was drawing myself entangled with a bunch of stuff and people and animals and you know parts of the earth and things like that and 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 I just felt like I'll, I'll, some of that fear go away. That like I'll I'll find out, you know. Just gotta just gotta be here, and it'll happen. It was a really cool experience, and I really appreciate that, Lucian. It's it's fantastic. Thanks. I feel like I'm I like did this so that I could be taught by all of you. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh my god, like. I needed to hear that for myself. <laughs> like helping each other help, helping each other help us by giving our full selves is 
I think a really great strategy um, in business, in art making, in relationships, like really everything. If you, and this is so cheesy, but if you show up, you create an opportunity for something to show up for you, not in a fragmented way, because you're, you're what's being responded to. So if your whole self is there, your whole self will be responded to. And that's kind of what I feel from what you just said. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the second time I've done kind of like this kind of a guided art meditation. And I, it still, it went well, just like the last time. And I really enjoyed it. Um, just like what's already been reflected by Rachel and Josh, you know, I got, I gained quite a bit of emotional release. It felt like, and it was amazing. Um, one of the patterns I noticed was like, I started out, you know, darkening the outsides and then all of a sudden like something came out and so it like moved differently and it was really interesting to like process through that. Um, the part that I really enjoyed was doing like that self portrait and then I like took the, my time on it and I really enjoyed it and then when it was time to like do this metamorphosis I was like, well, I don't really want to redraw it so I went and looked at it and I was like, well, I could heal it in pieces that were kind of broken it felt like so I went through and I just like you know Kintsugi put gold in there to try to fill it in and and it feels really good so thank you for this experience I really enjoyed it can I just jump into what Draven said I really felt like that second piece was the filling in and the connection. And that's what came from um, the experience for me was like the first self portrait was all parts and it was like fragmented. Whereas like I found the the connection and the, the, the like kind of, um, you know, closing the gaps was what the lesson that I learned. And so I see a lot of head nods. I think that that was like such a awakening for a lot of us is that was, um, you know, bringing our different parts our disparate parts of our lives together. And that's how we're going to create something new and beautiful in this world and in our businesses and in our pursuits of art and um, making. And so you really just highlighted that Lucian and I just want to thank you. I just want to respond to that really quickly. Um, that's very meaningful actually, uh, sort of in a spiritual scientific way, um, which is kind of how I come to these exercises. Um, because metamorphosis itself is a living principle. So in order to actually evolve something, life has to kind of resurrect it and reconstitute it. So just by, that's kind of like the theme of these exercises, metamorphosing from word to image to prayer to deed, all these different things, it's like, it's not only a loosening of our consciousness and our activity, but um, it's like a life and death process that um, really like brings certain things to life, lets them die and then reconstitute them in new life. And those actually are like meaning itself, like meaning itself exists in those patterns and those relationships. So. It's very fundamental, but um, I think it, uh, what you're reflecting is that it does actually have like a, a bodily, a conscious, um, a cognitive, all those relationships are in those metamorphoses. I wanted to kind of um, just, I was one of the head nodders, um, Jamie Lee, when you were talking um, and I was like, wow, other people, experienced that too. I mean, my first, this first self portrait was like, um, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, little pieces of things, fragments. Um, uh, and, you know, and then the, uh, her, her words of advice were be in peace. And then, my second one was like so much more coherent and cohesive and 
And the three words that came to me were um, choice, freedom, and connection. And it's just, I, I felt some, some evolution, some, some metamorphosis through this. It was really um, interesting. So thank you very much, Lucien. I can just second what everyone's saying. The sense of this change, the awareness of that things change, that they will inevitably change, but also that they can change and take time to change is a really valuable lesson I find in everything in life, right? Like, uh, I remember once taking a drawing class and at the beginning of the drawing class, it was just little shitty stick figures. And a few weeks later, I was like, oh, wow, like there's development. There's not, I don't have to judge myself on a static standard of who I think I am. And then the second thing is this listening to intuition, allowing myself to trust myself, kind of what you were saying, Rachel, and the sense of like letting go, letting myself go to what comes out um, that was wonderfully reaffirmed by, it's okay, just let it flow, let it go with that. And I feel like this is an exercise that I'd have to do on an ongoing basis to learn how to listen to my voice and to learn how to trust that voice rather than going with what I think I should be doing based on the image or how other people might respond, you know, uh, yeah, and then the third thing was center. Like, how do I find a center where I can absorb and learn things, but also have groundedness in, that's probably related to the trust, in that trust, you know? Yeah, so thank you very much. I'll go ahead and say something. Hi everyone, I'm Crystal. Um, so this, um, all of these exercises were just so freeing. Like I just felt like it, um, it just like all came out of me so quickly. And I know at one point you said like, you know, slow down, be, you know, calm with it. And I just like, I tried to slow down, but it just like kept coming. Like I just let it just flow and like whatever it was, I just let it be. Um, and so when you asked like for us to, to write a question, my question um, just, just again, just came out and it was, what is it that you desire so deeply that you know it is part of you? And for me, that just like resonated so much because it's like, what is that like, that deep desire, that deep calling that you have just so deeply that like, it's just it's just, you're like fixated on it or, you know, you just know that it's so important to you. And it's like acknowledging that that is essentially part of us, whether we are aware of it or not. Um, and then like when I drew the self portrait, I feel like mine was kind of like the, the opposite, like in the sense that it was like more cohesive the first time. And then the second time was like more abstract. Um, and then just like the poem, like I don't ever write poems and it just like all just came pouring out. So I just, this was amazing. So I'm just like so excited to be here with everyone um, and to, to grow and to just to have this space. So thank you so much. I'm just so excited to be here. Thank you. And there's just one, there's one thing I want to say about that. Um, it reminds me of this thing that I often do on my own when I'm, um, well, now I just kind of do it intuitively, but when I first started doing it, it was a conscious decision to um, like know myself into the retrospective trajectory of my development. So like thinking of myself here as, um, as an unfolding of what's in front of me. And it reminds me of what you're saying about like that desire that's so innate within you that it's actually like embedded in your fabric. It's like, it's, um, it's, it's the law of your unfolding almost. And to kind of like, to experience in a um, visceral way how um, through trust as Alexander was saying and centeredness that like you are actually um, the transformation that needs to happen before that goal manifests. Just like knowing that you are that 
as, as a life process is really comforting and actually like starts to engage in some sort of psychic process. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really amazing point you're making. Thank you so much. So we have one minute. Um, what do you think, Sonia? If there are people who want to say um, a few more things or we should close now, I'm not sure what. I'm fine to continue a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if people want to uh, still contribute um, and those who have to leave can obviously leave as well. Um, but we, if, for those who have to leave, we thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Lucien, for this beautiful workshop. Thank you so much, Lucien. Thank you, everyone. I can't wait to see you again. Bye. Thank you. See you guys next time. Yeah, thanks, Lucien. Thank it's great. Thank you so much. Love the rest. Yeah. Can't wait for the next one. See you. Yeah, Lucien, I, I really um, enjoyed this exercise. You know, I was a little bit stressed and um, nervous since last night, so I didn't really have uh, uh, that good of a sleep. And so after I did my presentation, like I started, I felt like a whoosh of like, you know, tiredness just come over me. And so while I was doing this, I felt like half asleep, but then that enabled my unconscious to come into the conscious. And, and, and so when you asked about, you know, ask yourself uh, a question after you, you did the squiggly lines, and then I just had this question. I was like, wait, no, was that the question? Is that the question that I that just popped up? I was like, no, I think I think that's not my question. I, I had this feeling of wanting to, you know, negate whatever was coming from my unconscious. Uh, my conscious was just pushing it away. But I could see the unfolding of how um, my first portrait was just so mental so much in in the realm of of I need to do this and I need to do that and and you know and then just letting it flow uh, I, I began to see how my soul emerged in my second one and so really you've you've created such a a wonderful process of of enabling um, people to deepen into the process of of the conscious to the unconscious and just letting that dialectic unfold Thank you for this really, really beautiful workshop. Um, yeah, this, the, this soul deepening is so interesting to hear reflected back from you and Rachel. Um, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious, like, do any of you guys have, does that mean anything to you guys? Like, a deepening of soul into into experience. And that's really fascinating to me. I, I put that as the title, but to hear it kind of spoken is like, what does that mean for you? What what is that actual? What is the reality of that deepening in terms of the soul? Yeah, I am um, a soul based coach in expressive arts. Uh coach myself so um but i'm always so surprised at what happens when doing these kinds of practices and i'm so appreciative because i also felt like the, your exercises really grounded me and um and brought sort of the things that have been swirling and the old patterns that um have been triggered in my life recently into this more crystallization but not coming from my head but really coming from that soul place and I really felt it kind of taking over when we did the um the kind of the drawing that you showed us with the swiggly lines um and my paper is small so I just started tracing it over and over um and it created this like trance-like state that I could feel really dropped me into that soul and into that more unconscious territory um 
And um, I think she left, but similar to what um, Draven shared about how that, that play with, um, with the dark into light and with the first portrait into the second, I, re I realized that like, I had this hesitancy going into the second one of being attached to the first drawing and not wanting to change or shift, but I just did it and it was so much lighter and things did move and I was like, oh yeah, that is sort of like the process and just um, deepening into that trust and seeing the change. This was my first drawing. Um, and the words or the advice that came to me was, um, I'm about to take this uh, two month shaman course. Um, and it was like the shaman is here and um, ready to be unveiled. And then in the second drawing, it got closer sort of to that unveiling. Um, so thank you so much. Um, you know, it just, it's always a wonderful experience to have like art space practices and soul work. Thank you. That was so amazing to see those images actually, because um, one of the things that I find in these sort of processes, uh, um, a previous person mentioned this, like her poem just kind of poured out of her when she never writes poetry. Um, it's, I think it's because um, like this type of artistic activity is a direct um, confrontation of meaning because it's like totally, it's totally anthropocentric. It's like our, our very selfhood is um, necessitating these actions as opposed to like a conceptual building of an artwork that is sort of collaging cultural motifs and stuff. Um, this is like, it's coming from your identity. Uh, so seeing basically like, it's kind of a long way of saying, when I saw your drawings, I felt like I was actually looking at a spiritual being because they, their, their um, process of creativity was completely unified with a process of transformation. Um, at, so, so it kind of goes back to metamorphosis for me again, that like art that comes into being or, or systems that come into being through a direct anthropocentric metamorphosis are innately living because they're, they're they're um, mirrored to a living process of our own consciousness, as opposed to a conceptual or theoretical, mm, like critique or something. Um, so that's a really, that's a gift to see those drawings. Thank you. Something too that, um, now that I think about uh, business, you know, is this continuous sense of getting to know your goals, your vision, yourself better, right? So. In this process, it was nice to have these steps of distillation where the entire self or the entire image becomes one word and then morphs into a poem and then gets, there's this process of clarification, which is very alchemical. And also I wanna show my drawings um, <laughs> because I feel like order came to it from pretty much chaos to I think anyway is a, a little bit more organized vision of the self. <laughs> and I think this is a crucial thing in, in anything in life. In, um, but especially if I'm thinking about businesses, you have a vision and oftentimes, at least from my experience, but also experience with other people, um, the clarification to get to a, a simpler vision is very difficult often because that people want to do everything at once and like, oh, I'm going to fix the world's problems. And then, yeah, but do you have like, can you distill it to one sentence, one idea, one vision that can drive you, that you understand why you feel passionate about this, why that matters to you? I also have to say, I totally see your individuality in those drawings because I know that you're like incredible at, um, cognitive mapping and um, those images like they have this sort of grid like system but the grid is undulating and it's it's kind of forming a symbolic nature so that kind of makes me think about like the um, innate meaning between um, symbol and and spirit or like form and and concept or something because they they're, they're very like 
uh, merged in your drawings in a symbiotic way. Um, so as an artist, that's, that's really fascinating. I'm sure that can apply to business as well, but I'm not really a <laughs> business person. <laughs> I was uh, just wanted to say, you know, it's such a joy to see this kick off for the Integral Impact Incubator and, you know, Integral Entrepreneurship or Philosopreneur. I mean, it really is trying to bring two different worlds together. And I was just sitting here imagining, like, I, I was in an incubator at WeWork Labs like two years ago, and I was just thinking how this sort of exercise would have seemed so alien to that community. You know, people may have disengaged or disconnected, but at CIIS, it's just such a perfect doorway for people to walk through into connecting to like the essence of who they are as a first step to like, what do you want to do? And even the time space, you know, uh, I, I've also had a long day and a, and a long night and you were like, take 15 minutes to do this. And I was like, 15 minutes, you know, take 20 minutes to do this. But I think creating that time to say it's all right you know because if we were all in the same place there'd be no problem taking 15 minutes to draw zoom makes it a little bit like you feel pressure to make it quick but it was great to have your confidence to say we are going to take this time together even though it's a digital space and uh you know soul deepening you're asking like i think a lot of the dead letter versus the living spirit right so so much of our lives in a materialist reductionist paradigm in a postmodern, I would also say, uh, let's say like we start in modernity, right? Which is maybe 1900s and then postmodern is the 20th century. And now we're trying to find what is integral, right? So postmodern is so random. You can be anything, do anything, say anything. You can take bits of this culture, put it there. There's no context. And so things are very fragmented because people are just born into this world and we have the internet and we can just be whatever we want to be without understanding what is the basis for who we want to be. So I think that's soul deepening and this kind of, I love the, the word tool you described as you were saying, it's a tool you use for yourself, you know, and sometimes I think it can be a bit, uh, people hesitate because if you try and make spirituality into a science, then are you privileging science over spirituality? But at the same time, I think there's value to admitting that, hey, this may seem like some woo-woo exercise, but it is a legitimate tool that I use to help me develop in some practical ways. Um, so soul deepening, I think, is like connecting more to that living spirit of who am I in this very moment, not who I thought I was or who I should be or what the media is showing to me. So, the, you know, these are my, this is, this is my pictures. So this is like what I drew. You know, again, I was surprised. Um, and then the second one was like, was this, it was, it was like so much more clear and, and simplified and symbolic. Um, Can you hold them next to each other? Yeah. I was surprised. I was like, oh no, we have to draw it again. But then I started drawing and I was like, oh my God, wow. I have been on a journey. I love how it almost looks like the sun, like, um, turns into your actual eye and then like your you know maybe your conceptual self takes a back seat as a shadow and like the real living element is like bam i'm <laughs> i'm like i've moved beyond the church i'm in my own like autonomy <laughs> my spirit is my own <laughs> choice <laughs> yeah mysterious mysterious yeah. And, and and powerful so you know Bravo for, I think people really resonated. And this is just beautiful to see, like, this is what integral entrepreneurship feels like. It's, it's Lucien, it's, it's your workshop. It's everyone feeling it. And it's all that's going to come like, this is what it is. And I think it's, there is something so creative happening here. It is a cutting edge, you know, we may be a small group, but it is a legitimate cutting edge that you all are helping to birth. So thank you. Thank you so much. I actually created this exercise. This is the first time I ever done it. Like I never did it these this specific sequence. Um, I just did it through this technique I use of imagining the social experience in a loving way, um, and trusting 
like you mentioned confidence actually and um i study rudolf steiner a lot and he says that the future the the um the antidote for the illness of the future is confidence and it took me a while to understand like what that really means but through my own working with that um that activity i guess i realized that confidence is like a being that has a active relationship with our own initiative and if we can like if we can behold confidence as like a selfless being that's not our own like i'm my own, our own willpower it's almost like a future being that is like there to like give to everyone and like bringing our work out of that confidence as like that being then the work is like i find it is actually very social and it always succeeds because it's it's liberated from the self it's it's in its um creative forming it's totally social and and interested in the social and and the individuality is just sort of a, like a nodule on that social organism um so i think you're tapping into that confidence yourself um just by like saying that word which in that light it's very meaningful and actually sort of becomes an experience a, a method of working that's not just like i know i can do this it's like it's like oh i'll receive that confidence thank you yeah that's great to hear uh you know i, I don't want to get too political but there are value systems underneath political beliefs and one of the interesting challenging dialectics that I've been interested in is, you know, what conservative viewpoints have to share for human development and what progressive viewpoints have to share for human development. And CIIS is a very progressive community, but part of my journey has been to see how even conservative values and tradition has important things to share. And I, I like that you are redeeming uh, by surfacing this quote from, I think Steiner, you, you said, the importance of confidence because uh, it can be one of the ills of modernity is that humanity is overconfident in our powers. And so you're allowing people to feel that confidence by recognizing it as part of something bigger than the self. So you're holding the self and the collective, not just sacrificing individuality in service of the other, but bringing both of them into relationship. Wow, okay, I think we should go to sleep. <laughs> Late where I am. Um, I want to say this to everyone, but um, I would keep these. And if there's any place in your house where you want to just line them up for a week, I've had something I did up for months and I see it every morning when I wake up and it's just an image I drew in an exercise and it is life-giving because um, it came out of my own transform, my own transformation. So um, I would just offer to hold these as documents that can actually like help you for a long period of time. They're not just tonight. They might be just tonight, but um, likely they're a lot deeper than that. So um, yeah, thank you to Sonia and Aya for just like, bringing Integral Impact Incubator into this semester in this way. <laughs> and thank you to all of you. Absolutely. And thank you, Sarah and Alexander and Abir for starting, you know, Impact at CIS and for uh, for Kelsey and Crystal and everyone else who was, who was here today. We're, we're creating this together, um, you know, and, and, and we hope that this can be the gift that we offer to the rest of the world. So we look forward to, to seeing you uh, uh, at the other workshops and to continue on this process. We'll, we'll be in touch. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye.